All right, I'm mostly into just chicken and dabbling these days, and I wanted to show you some, you know, some recent results. This is a chicken pen I found, uh, a tall spindly thing in 2008, very end of the year. I have been following it, and of course, in 2009, we had our ice storm, and so that's what happened to it. And as of 2013, this is what it had turned into, uh, responding to the opening of the canopy and, and uh, put up new growth. And, and in 2013, it actually bore some fruit. And I was looking forward to 14 being a, a bumper year. And what I found was that some overzealous trail clear, clearing person had decided that four feet from the trail was too close, and so it cut it down. Oh. Oh. And during uh, the 2014 season, the basal sprouts grew seven feet. Wow. So it's, it really left up there again. On the other hand of the spectrum, this is what I call a chinkapin gnome. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think this, this particular tree has never ever seen the blight. It's probably more than 50 years old, and you'll notice that it's only three feet in diameter, but it has the, uh, the bark of a mature old tree. <clears throat> and when I've, I've found chestnut sprouts like that, they're typically at least 50 years old. So you've seen how fast the chinkapin can grow and how slow it can grow and uh, everything in between. Now one thing I have been doing is trying to figure out exactly what old growth chinkapin look like. And here's a site where I think we have our best candidates. Uh, on the right is a fallen old blight killed chinkapin log, uh, about two feet in diameter, and it's, it's about 45 feet in length, and of course the top isn't present. And on the site today, you have large old posts of black oaks, and they are all 75 feet tall. So uh, can we reconstruct this particular tree? Uh, well, one thing I can do is figure out what the crown looked like from, on the basis of, of the biggest sprouts we have alive today. So here's a sprout uh, from uh, the famous hiking spot of Fern Gully in, in Arkansas. And this is what the crown on that 80-inch diameter tree looks like. And when you add that kind of crown to the logs that I've found, this is what they look like. Mm -hmm. So I reconstruct two trees on this site as being about 70 feet tall when they were alive and having this form. And it's a pretty unique growth form. Uh, I found that old growth chicken always have a single stem. They aren't multi-stemmed. It takes a fire or some kind of injury to make them re-sprout into clumps of stems. They evolve into a single stem but they're full of what I call bayonet joints, which were probably generated by the top being killed by something and then a side branch looping up. But notice how many bayonets there are in this particular tree. Uh, the other peculiar thing is if you look at the base of these trees, the old logs show numerous little dwarf trees growing from the base. And almost every single old chinkapin log you find have these. So it's a pretty peculiar growth form. It's got this one main trunk that's an upright straight tree, and it's got all these sprouts that I don't think are released by injury, they're just there at the base of the tree. So a very interesting sort of thing, and this is what I think is our best vision of what old growth chicken look like in our, in our forest. Most clones have the same growth form, uh, three to six stems all growing very fast and vigorously. Uh, the shape applies release from some previous industry. Most dead stems have exactly 12 rings, one living clone has similar, a similar dead stem and 14 rings in 2010. And why didn't that stem fall over like the others? Well, it's still attached to a living root system. And so it, it had the roots to hold it upright. Otherwise, it would have fallen over just like all the others. Uh, fire and drought are ruled out as having any role in this. So it implies dynamics of blight and the trajectory of an epidemic. And what I think happened was that we had so much the root systems have built up so much strength that they could keep <coughs> resprouting 